How's it going everybody? This is Kevin with another video. Today we're going to be talking about this Rolex Submariner. I'm really excited to be talking about this watch. As many of you know, Rolex is the most iconic brand in watchmaking. Uh, probably one of the most iconic brands in the world. Um, and of the most iconic brand, this is their most iconic watch, the Rolex Submariner, which was originally released in the 1950s and has slowly been updated throughout the years. What you're looking at in front of you today is the latest reference, reference number 126610LV, that LV um, it indicating that this is the green bezel version. So this green bezel version is in fact the Mark II version and what that means is is that um, in 2023 Rolex changed their bezel color. So while they don't label that on any of the material you receive from an authorized dealer or on the Rolex cards, um, Rolex subtly makes changes to their watches and um, they end up with these nicknames like Mark II referring to this bezel, or in this case, this watch is often kind, uh, oftentimes called the Starbucks. Uh, so this is a really beautiful Submariner. It's the newest one, as I said, and it comes in with a slightly larger case than the previous double one reference. Here, let me just clean that bezel real quick. Um, at 41 millimeters advertised, However, the true dimensions for this watch is about, hang on, I need to zero out these calipers, uh, is about 40.5. So let's see if I pull that measurement for you today. Yep, about 40.5-ish is what most people have been getting. So it's a slightly increased bezel size or case size, that is, uh, from the previous double one reference, but this watch wears so much better than the previous super case, in my opinion. Now, don't get me wrong, those super case double one references are still very nice. However, I am a fan of the fact that Rolex on this edition decided to taper these lugs a little bit more. So these nice little chunky lugs were even chunkier in the previous reference, but they slimmed this down. And then also what Rolex did was they increased the size of um, the lug to lug right here from 20 millimeters to 21 millimeters. So it wears slightly larger from lug to lug here. However, because it's all integrated in the case, that's not really that noticeable. Although it tapers down to at the buckle. Let's see, just right before the buckle, I think it tapers down to 17. So 16 and a half. And then the buckle is 19 millimeters at the buckle. So very, very classy, moderate sizing. This watch is definitely um, a larger watch, so to speak, but overall within the dive watch world, this watch is very wearable, especially because it has that tapering bracelet, but it's also pretty slim for, for a dive watch that has 300 meters of water resistance at about 2.6 is what my calipers are, are pulling right here, about 2.6. 2.5, I think, is official measurements. And a lug tip to lug tip of, I think 47 is usually the common length. I'm getting a flat 48. Still being under 50 millimeters, this makes it a very, very wearable watch. So let me go ahead and take you around this watch a little bit. I've talked about the bracelet and some of the measurements. This is the Submariner. Um, I know many of you know what a Submariner is, but it's worth mentioning some of the things that make a Submariner Submariner. Uh, one of the things is is a diver's watch. So what that means is, is it has a triple locked crown. So you'll notice right here on this beautiful example where the crown is side up, uh, that there is three dots. That stands for triple lock. So it's a deeper threading into this crown. So both the crown is threaded 
and then the case back is threaded. There's a gasket there, gasket here, and there's even a gasket um, with the crisp crystal. That gives it really, really tight water resistance, and this watch is rated for 300 meters or 1,000 feet of water resistance. Some of the things that Rolex changed with this release of the 1-2 references is they upgraded the movement to a movement that now has a 72 hour power reserve. I think it's the 32 series movement. And they also, um, I believe, increased the anti-magnetic um, properties. And um, those are two big things that are, are definitely uh, improvements on this newer generation is the increased power reserve through the new movement release. Um, and they also added for the first time AR coding behind the dial. So um, older reference watches did not have any AR coding uh, with one exception. There was, uh, as we got closer to this modern era, uh, many of the Rolex watches did have AR coding um, underneath the Cyclops. This is that date magnifier here. Um, at the Cyclops had uh, AR coding. Now Rolex has AR coded the uh, underbelly of the crystal. And I think that's a really good choice. You might be noticing that the, 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 the crystal still gets um, some glare here, and that's true, but overall, um, it is very, very legible. And they could have made it even more legible and even more clear by AR coding the top like Omega does, but I th always think that that is a bad decision. Mainly because when you AR code the top surface of a watch, um, the AR coding is ironically a lot so softer than the sapphire crystal that these watches come with. Um, if you didn't know, sapphire crystal is a very, very hard substance. So you can, uh, you can really beat up this watch, and in most instances, the crystal is not going to scratch. However, if you have an AR coating on the crystal, it is going to scratch. So if it's AR treated on the top side of the crystal, it will appear as if it is scratched, even though it isn't which kind of makes having an AR crystal, in my opinion, almost pointless. So I'm really not a fan of the double-coated AR uh, treatments on top and bottom. And I think Rolex made the right choice to AR coat the underbelly. Because really, you want to be able to feel like you can have this watch for decades to come and it not look worse for wear. And this one won't look worse for wear because it has this beautiful ceramic bezel which as many of you know, like Sapphire, is very, very hard and not prone to scratching. Although it is more prone to shattering, uh, unlike the previous um, aluminum bezels, but overall a very, very resilient material. Um, and this watch also has um, Rolex's Luminova, uh, which gives it kind of a, a bluish glow. And this watch, having these maxi indices, these larger indices in these modern iterations, make it a torch at night. It lights up very, very, very well um, and just absolutely beautiful. But let me go ahead and take some time to show you um, on the wrist and then a slight comparison. So I just mentioned the AR coating, as you know, and this will be a good example of just how much more inky, black, and legible the dial is. So again, you can still see glare, but overall, very, very beautiful. So this is an older reference, 16570, famously called the five-digit um, explorers or five-digit Rolexes. Um, and for many people, these references are some of people's favorites. One, because there's a lot of availability on the secondhand market, but two, because they're very wearable, specifically because they have those slimmer lugs. So Rolex went back to having slimmer lugs, but as you can see, even though these watches are both advertised as roughly 40 
in 41 millimeters, this one being 40, this one being 41. This is in true measurements around 39. Um, you'll notice that this Submariner looks much larger for its uh, size, even though there's technically about a millimeter size difference. And that mainly comes from the lug to lug, but I would say even more so the slimming of the lugs at this point. But let's go ahead and put it on the wrist. And as you guys know, I always do a little bit further back of a wrist shot. I think far too many watch reviewers and uh, people that are looking at watches online have it way too close and doesn't really give a good proportion of what you're going to see on your own wrist. So my wrists are slightly above six and a half inches. And as you can see, even with um, probably slightly below average wrist size, I think most men are probably closer to seven inches. Um, you'll see that this wears really well. So I have plenty, plenty of wingspan here on my wrist to rock this watch without, oh, sorry, Luke, um, to rock this watch without it looking at all terrible. It's a very, very comfortable watch. Um, you know, Rolex really nailed it with their oyster bracelet design. And in addition to that, this, oh, now sorry, Darth. Um, in addition to that, they have this beautiful clasp system. Uh, this clasp system is 100% better than these older five-digit models with few exceptions. Uh, but let me go ahead and just sing Rolex's praises here. So once you uh, release this clasp, what it has is this beautiful glide lock. And this glide lock lets you adjust the watch based on your comfort needs. Where this older reference that, that you'll see right here does have a adjustment system, but it's uh, you, you have to manually adjust it by poking these little prongs right here until you get the right adjustment. So I will say this, this is a very comfortable watch, um, very well designed, just absolutely beautiful, solid, tank-like feeling, but, um, and just wears really stunning on the wrist. I'll put it right back on the wrist for you one more time. So no complaints there. The timekeeping, as you would expect, is really good. Uh, Rolex rates these watches within two seconds plus or minus, which is just phenomenal. So this watch just runs so good. Um, and just an overall beautiful watch. One of my favorite things is, of course, the sound signature. Listen to this bezel as I turn the 100, 120 click bezel. There is nothing like a Rolex bezel. They have cornered the market on perfecting the bezel. And I can confidently say out of all the watches I've ever reviewed on this channel or in person, personally, this is the best bezel, both with purchase, right? With this coin edge, sharp coin edge, um, slightly overhanging on the side, making it so easy to grab, unlike the Tudor 58, which comes flat, and in just the quality of the bezel turn. So if you didn't know, there's actually four points of ball bearings, right up roughly where I'm pointing my two fingers. And those springs give an even flow and balance to the turning of this bezel, just making it an absolute dream. So saying a lot of things that I like about this watch, let's talk about some things that I don't. Uh, one of the things that can sometimes be hard with owning a watch, and I think it's worth sharing, is that these watches are becoming so expensive these days. And because of that, if you don't have um, if you purchase this watch, you can tend to feel a paralysis of sorts when you're wearing it because you know it's a costly item. And because of that, it could sometimes cause you to second 
guess whether you're going to wear it while you're doing something rough, maybe hiking or, or what have you. And I think that's kind of a shame because these are um, built so, so well, but the prices of them these days have, have in some ways, at least for me, created a hesitation in selecting this watch as maybe the watch I'm gonna wear if I'm rock climbing or doing something more adventurous, which is a shame, at least maybe for just me, um, because I definitely think that these watches are worth wearing. Um, the other thing is, is um, even though these watches have become more solid over time, um, meaning that they have um, just used more, used more metal to build out the watch, um, they're heavier, um, that doesn't necessarily mean better. Um, I can, in um, all honestly, tell you that this watch is way more comfortable. This Explorer 2 is way more comfortable than this Submariner. Now, I'm saying way more. The reality is, is they're both comfortable. But because this bracelet is hollowed out, and this one is a full ingot of steel, this is lighter and lighter makes it more comfortable. And again, because this buckle is a lot smaller and it's just a stamped buckle, um, it goes under the cuff and under the radar easier, where this is, as you'll see, a lot thicker and bigger overall. See, so look at the distant travel distance on that. Look at the travel distance on this. Very different. So, for those reasons, I do find this watch to be more comfortable. Now, it is also worth saying that these watches on the secondary market have creeped up in price close to what you can get if you're fortunate enough to get called by an authorized dealer to purchase a Submariner. But these are great watches. So let's go ahead and end this with a time graph. Here, we'll release it. So Rolex rates them for about plus or minus two seconds. And let's see how this is running. You know, I haven't worn it for a couple days. There we go, plus one second. Usually the first reading is not the most accurate. Plus one second, so running like an absolute champ. So, concluding thoughts, phenomenal watch, so beautiful. Who wouldn't want to own it? But if you're considering buying it, just my advice to you, remember that watches, in my opinion, should be worn. So if you're not going to wear it in confidence because you know you're holding a $10,000 plus watch, then maybe consider getting something different. Otherwise, who doesn't want to own this beautiful, beautiful Submariner? All right. Well, if you liked this channel, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will be back with more content. Thanks for watching.